Good evening. I'd like to call the Water Pollution Control Authority and regular town council meeting of North Brantford, Connecticut to order on Tuesday, March 19th in town council chambers at 6.33. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, can we have roll call, please? Present. Councillor Angleton. Here. Councillor Diamond. Here. Councillor Gold. Here. Councillor Miller. Here. Councillor Palladino. Here. Councillor Panicia. Here. And Councillor Santana. Here. Okay. Next item on the agenda is minutes of previous meeting. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept the February 20th, 2024 special WPCA and town council meeting? So moved, but I have one correction. Okay. Well, I guess I'll wait for the second. Second. Okay, on, on the town manager report, on this third paragraph, where it says, um, going to give excellence and innovation, a community partner, I, it says awkward, I think you mean award to the um, potato fest. That, that's your question, okay. All right. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. The next is, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the March 5th, 2024 special town council meeting? So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. And the last minutes are from March 12, 2024. Do I have a motion to approve the special meeting town council for so, the 8 p.m. meeting? So <coughs> Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. One abstention. Okay, motion carries. <coughs> now we're going into the Water Pollution Control Authority agenda. First item, correspondence and citizen statements regarding the WPCA. Seeing none, we'll go on to item four, unfinished business. Request to connect to sanitary sewers at 832 East Main Street, Bramford, Boston Post Road, Map 3C, Lot 17. Good, good evening, uh, Victor Benny, town engineer. The, since our last meeting, the application did go through the town of Brantford WPCA approval process, and you, sh you should have a letter in your packet from the Brantford town engineer dated March 5th, 2024, which indicates the Brantford WPCA approval and the positive referral back to the North Brantford WPCA. The property owner will be required to go into a separate agreement with the town of Brantford WPCA as part of the connection process. Um, the current, our current regulations do re uh, require the special connection fee again be set at twelve thousand three hundred dollars. That's uh, per age re restricted uh, residential unit, and, and again, this is a single family existing single family dwelling that's being proposed to connect. And I did include, hopefully in your packet there, a suggested motion for you folks to consider for a uh, hopeful approval. Yes. Okay. So the suggested motion is on page 31 of our packet. So do I hear a motion? So move to accept the motion on page 31. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no new business listed. 
Um, any citizen statements and petitions regarding the WPCA? Okay, moving on in the agenda, um, we are going to move item 9A and B, community events and presentations up to the beginning of the regular town council meeting. So we have two um, very nice events that we are going to be um, recognizing tonight, um, presentations. So the first is the presentation of the ARPA fund for nonprofit checks. And we have two organizations that we approved at our last meeting. Um, so for picture taking, I think to make it the ease of it, I'll go out front and have the recipients come up, but if the council members can just stay behind the dais and kind of stand so that you're all in the picture, that would be great and we don't have to keep going back and forth um, on that. So the first presentation is to the Totucket Historical Society. I'm taking pictures, yeah. It's not that kind of picture. <laughs> you need to brush it up a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Just gonna need Should we stand? Rose, you want us to stand? Yeah. Yeah. Brantford's advanced photographer.
are always the fun things like from the town council so everyone is welcome to stay for the meeting if you would like if you don't we will not be offended if you would like to take this opportunity to leave you are more than welcome i'm highly offended <laughs> i'm highly offended if you leave <laughs> Item seven, reports of committees, boards, and commissions. First item is um, economic development. I have okay. Next one is park and recreation. Their February meeting was canceled due to lack of quorum. Their next meeting is next Tuesday, the 26th. Um, police commission. Now, so now I can spend a lot of time because I have a lot of things to talk about. That's great. Um, there was a police commission meeting on March 11th. The first thing were some issues that were um, shared in terms of problems with construction of the new facility, and those were given to the building committee. Chief Lovelace met with Representative Candelora to discuss a grant where the police department will receive $60,000 for speed enforcement on rural roads. Um, that will happen until May 31st. The chief is also looking into, I don't know if people have noticed over throughout the town, there were these big stop signs all of a sudden, double stop signs. Well, somehow the, the state put those up, but no one seems to know yet, and he's looking into that, and we'll report back to the police commission on that. Um, chief is also, um, also it was, I think it was really nice, he set up an honor guard for former police commission chair Dan Triano, which I think is a very nice thing that he did. <coughs> he also anticipates a shortfall in the overtime account because of the many injuries within the department. The commission then re approved a request to purchase 14 portable radios at a cost of $4,667 for use by Park and Rec when they have various department functions. And that will come out of the, the, the original money for the communications, so it's not coming out of our uh, regular town budget. Just so people know, the license plate readers that were approved by the council through ARPA funds have been placed where there's one in North Brantford and there's one in Northford. However people are looking for where they are, there is one in each area. And I think there, in a couple days, there were like 4,000 of them read in, on, on you know, someplace in North Brantford. And the last thing is, um, there are interviews this week for the integrated police operations manager and for the deputy police chief, and I think there are three of us from town council Um, next one is Fire Commission. Fire Commission, okay, we met recently on the 7th of March, uh, went through several um, recognitions, one to <coughs> Townline Wine and Spirits, which pr purchased uh, an item. Anthony, what was the item again that was part of that? Quantitative fit testing hey, machine. Okay, I couldn't get the name, the quantitative fit testing machine, um, as well as recognition to um, some crew, uh, Fantastic work and excellent recognition to accrue for a save that they had provided. And one of the neat things we got to hear was uh, the person of whom they saved, uh, who had flatlined and they were able to bring back, wasn't available at 10 because he was vacationing in Florida. So that's, that's kind of a good, good news to hear uh, that they were able to do that. And it's uh, wonderful when we can have those type of recognitions from our, 
our fantastic uh, fire and uh, <coughs> emergency folks. Uh, went through another other litany of things when bylaws, drone policy, and some budget updates. Talked about the new ambulance update and getting things in process. There was also uh, discussion of the pension realignment and the allowing folks to stay past the 70-year mark uh, as long as they're, they're fit, meeting the, the fit um, profile of uh, the um, required um, phys yeah, physical. Thank you. I couldn't get that word out of my head. Um, and then they also talked about some issues with uh, the current radio system and uh, some blackout spots that they're going to be looking towards. Next meeting is going to be on April 4th, and uh, that concludes my report. All right. Thank you. Uh, planning and zoning? Planning and zoning met on March 7th. Um, just a few things they had going on. Public hearing uh, for 356 Totucket Road. Uh, it's the corner, uh, there's a, a parcel on the corner of uh, Borelli Road in Totucket, um, and they wanted to split it into two uh, uh, parcels. It was approved. Um, and the other thing, on, uh, the other item was 730 Forest Road. Uh, which is on the corner of Forest Road and Totucket. Um, the, uh, the owner's gonna be building uh, an 8,700 uh, square foot contractor storage building. That was approved and that's about it. Finance subcommittee. Uh, finance subcommittee met last week, and uh, one of the big items that we discussed, which is later on in the agenda, is um, changing. We need to amend the language in the STW roof bond resolution. There is money left over that we want to start uh, doing some of the renovations, the interior renovations. Um, that the um, department has had originally asked for some ARPA funding and there is money left over from the roof project. So that item will come up later on the agenda. Um, and then we also uh, talked about um, our transition in, and how it's going in the new uh, software program, Munis. So we, we spent some time on that um, and that was about it. And we are starting our budget season so we had our first round of budget workshops last Tuesday and the next round will be next week which will be library public works in Board of Education and that's it uh, the next is public safety communications subcommittee in terms of the towers things seem to be working okay I guess there are some issues from what Jeff said but for the most part the, the communications for the tower is working there still is a problem Verizon has put their uh, attendance, uh, attendance on the um, tower at Northward, but there are evidently some communications still going on between the tower company and Verizon. Okay, thank you. And the last uh, report is from the CIWWA. And that, that meeting will take place next Wednesday, the 27th. Okay, thank you. On to town manager's report. Mayor, Council, good evening, <coughs> and uh, happy St. Joseph's Day. You'll note the uh, Italian flag is flying at Town Hall today in observation of St. Joseph's Day. Over the weekend, the Irish flag flew here at Town Hall in recognition of St. Patrick's Day, so happy belated St. Patrick's Day to you all. Uh, work on the town budget proposal continues, and we expect to be delivering the budget binders to council members for the March 26th budget year in advance of the April 1st charter mandated deadline. Uh, ribbon cuttings, we do have another couple coming up shortly, and the council will be notified of um, side piece of news, the new Central Cafe located at Central Plaza has been nominated for Connecticut Magazine's Best Beer Bar in Connecticut, and they need local help to win, so please go to ConnecticutInsider.com or visit Central Cafe's Facebook page for the link to cast your vote in support of them. Uh, as of February 1st, we've been accepting applications for the elderly homeowner, totally disabled homeowner, and additional veterans programs of the assessor's office. Applications uh, Applicants must be 65 by December 31st or totally disabled by the Social Security Administrator, not disabled by them, but uh, according to them, um, to qualify. Uh, 
to qualify for the state program, income levels are 43,800 for a single person and 53,400 for a married couple. Um, to qualify for the local program, income levels are set at 50,000 if single and 61,000 if married. This is in accordance with the changes made by the council last year, which increased these thresholds. Applications are being accepted at the assessor's office through May 15th, 2024. Uh, at Park and Rec, as part of their artisan series, um, they'll be having a class on making basket cheese, featuring none other than Calabro cheesemaker and resident Frank Angeloni for a hands-on cheesemaking class. Basket cheese is an Easter tradition. It is still made the old-fashioned way by hand, making a beautiful tabletop presentation when unmolded, showing off the weaves of the basket. Class is this Wednesday and Thursday from 5 to 7.30 at Stanley T. Williams. The Wednesday class is already fully booked, uh, and I'll be attending the Thursday class myself, and I'll be posting pictures, but only if it doesn't turn out ridiculous. <laughs> uh, the IRS Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, or VITA program, is once again being offered through our town libraries, offering free help in preparing and filing income tax returns for those in need. Those interested should call the Atwater or Smith Libraries and be put in contact with our VTA coordinator. The newly formed Veteran Service Commission held its organizational meeting on Tuesday, February 27th. Mayor Angeloni and I have joined them for their inaugural meeting to swear them in, oversee the election of their officers, and get them going as they begin to examine many items, including the creation of the North Frankfurt Veterans Hall of Fame, designating North Frankfurt as a Purple Heart community, and developing observational events associated with Patriot Day, Veterans Day, and Memorial Day. They've selected Zach Poston as their chair and Daniel Camp as their vice chair, and the next meeting will be April 9th at Edward Smith Library. I'm thankful once again to Gina Cox and Kathy Poston, who have agreed to take the lead on organizing our Memorial Day Parade. We have held two organizational meetings already, including Public Works, Fire, and Police on logistics and securing parade elements. We have some new elements this year, which we're excited about as this event, important event continues to grow. And now with the creation of the Veteran Service Commission, Chuck Larkins of the commission will be joining us as we finalize details to put on the parade, which will be held on the Northford side of town this year. As please join our Park and Recreation and Senior Center staff for their annual St. Patrick's Day lunch last Thursday, May 14th. As always, they put on a terrific event that was attended by roughly 60 residents for a corned beef and cabbage lunch. And thanks as always to Chef Tony for the great work she does, as well as the rest of the team for making the Parks and Recreation team, in conjunction with Public Works and North Brantford Conservation Land Trust, Trust once again put out their traditional leprechaun door on the trails at the Harrison Preserve. If you were lucky enough to discover the door to the leprechaun's home, you would see the door into the tree he lives, as well as the stairs and his outdoor sitting area, including his pipe. You could also take one of his lucky gold pieces. My son enjoyed this once again this year, as I know many families and kids did. And uh, we have some important collection dates coming up. Scrap metal pickup will take place the week of April 1st on your regular collection day. This includes air conditioners, dehumidifiers, microwaves, large appliances, refrigerators with doors removed, metal lawn furniture, hot water tanks, tools, metal fencing, filing cabinets, furnaces, garbage pails, non-riding lawnmowers with gas removed, outdoor grills, small machines, and aluminum siding. There'll be a free electronics recycling event on Saturday, April 13th. This includes TVs, CDs, DVD players, VCRs, computers, monitors, printers, laptops, keyboard mice, wires, hardboard dr hard drives, small kitchen appliances, etc. <coughs> Drop-off location is a public works facility at 290 Forest Road from 9 a.m. to 12. Special thanks to the Solid Hazardous Waste and Recycling Committee and our Public Works Department for coordinating in conjunction with Take-Two Electronics Recycling. And bulk pickup will be the week of April 15th on the day of your regular pickup. This includes tree limbs, tree branches, scrap wood, rugs, which all need to be at least four feet long, no thicker than four inches and need to be bundled or tied. Couches, mattresses, box springs, picnic tables, and wooden furniture. No scrap and vehicle parts and no home cleanouts. That concludes my report. Okay. Dr. Facebook comments for you. All yeah. right. It's a holiday for bulk pickup, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, next item is town manager's report on the permanent project building committee. Thank you. Uh, at the North Brantford Intermediate School, the project is expected to ramp up during the April break. For North Brantford High School, in phase two, the roofing is now 75% complete. The roof is now weather tight and the fascia and gutter in progress. The exterior masonry is 30% complete with a target completion of mid-May. Interior concrete masonry punch list is being worked on. The interior framing and wall rough inspections are ongoing drywall has commenced. Painting began on March 18th. For the North Brantford Police Department EOC, 
prepping the base and final grading for paving is scheduled for the first week in April. The installation of metal roof panels is ongoing and a clear story section is completed. All mechanical and electrical equipment are 95% complete, remaining tie-ins, then testing and startups will be scheduled. Interior finishes are ongoing, including painting, sealing, grid, and flooring. The above ceiling inspections with the EOR and the building department have been done. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. All right, we already did item nine, so on to item 10, citizen statements, petition, and correspondence. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. Good evening, Cliff Good Potter, evening. Northburg. Um, I'm going to go into something here. I don't know how many of you are aware, but it's the heart of, of many organizations. It's a French term. I'm sure you've been well aware of it, Michael. It's called yeah. esprit de corps. Yeah. Uh, to discuss because it's the very body. You can't buy this. You can't win it. You can only earn it. And once you earn it, any organization that you belong to is top notch. So this is very important because, um, let me just say this. I hate it when dollar signs override common sense. Tommy and, and um, uh, Walter, I don't know if you've ever been in the military. I don't know if you've ever been in the fire department. But spread the core in the military, you all want to operate at full capacity from the captain to the cook. And as a unit, when you have spread the core, there's nothing you can't accomplish. Well, our fire department works on spread the core. Last Tuesday, counselors ignored important input from people in the know. Changes were proposed, not healthy ones in my mind. Uh, you start. You better start planning for a paid department if you don't straighten this mess out. The fire department is now running smoothly as volunteers under the present chief because of spreet de corps. Everybody's treated equal. Everybody performs equal from the top to the bottom because they love what they do. You start messing with their budget, you're going to take the spreet de corps and you can't put a price on that. When you pull that out of there, you're in trouble. Um, you're gonna affect negatively if you mess with too much. And then you're gonna lose response time because people are not gonna be treated equal. There's gonna be a high and a low. And the low are gonna say, geez, do I really wanna get out of bed tonight? They're probably gonna say no. You can't get the morale back once it's gone. So, uh, you know, this is not easy for me to read. And I was thoroughly upset when I heard what I heard. Um, who are the, the town firemen? Do you know any of them? Do you know what they do? Three of them I know are, are uh, contractors. They bid hourly jobs. They might bid the job out for 10 hours, but they respond to phone, uh, fire calls. They might lose four hours of work time. What's that do to their profit? Ted Newbig, Keith Durbacher, Gary Pedersen, they always run, but it costs them. It costs them profits out of your business. Other businesses in town, they get to keep going. They might be irritated by the sounds of the sirens going by, but they still can do what they do. These guys have stopped, dropped, and rolled the fire trucks. They bid jobs at the hourly rate. So say a 10 hour job, four hours at a fire, he's now out of making profit on six hours work. How did they get there to the firehouse? They don't call an Uber. They get in their own car, use their own gas, and go to the firehouse and roll the equipment. They're never paid back for that. Uh, I just, day, night, weekends, holidays. How many people rep remember the Schatz farm burned down on Thanksgiving? <clears throat> Every fireman in town rolled for that fire, had to drop their turkey dinner utensils and go to that fire, and they did. That's the kind of guys we got. So stop messing with them. Do you lose money if you're not a fireman? The sirens, no, your business still flies. Your sirens, uh, you know, might affect your noise level. Area demands, Northford, so different than downtown. Northford's got farms, 
but no hydrant. You need water. You need different kinds of trucks. You need kind of different kind of operator instructions. Down here, you got more tall buildings, so you need a ladder truck. So you have to, those guys have to be trained on the ladder trucks. You just can't pass equipment around and people around because they're not here. North Brantford has bigger buildings, more traffic, and different types of trucks, so it's difficult for skill sets. I feel that you're micromanaging a job you never did. So how can you help them if you never did, you never sat in their a car, you never walked in their shoes. So how can you put input into something you've never done? And you can see I'm, I'm angry. I'm angry at all at the people involved. Listen to the people in the know. They're talking to you. Back off. Do what's right. These firemen deserve your respect. They have more than earned mine. These firemen stop putting dollar signs on their backs. That's not what this town's about, and I hope it. I'll move out if we become that kind of town. As much as I tell you I love this town, if we go down and dollar sign dirty, you're, you're going the wrong way. Um, Walter, you're a good welder. I love the work you do. When I bring something to you, do I tell you how to do the job? I respect your intelligence because you know your job and you do excellent work. I'll be back in a heartbeat if I ever need it. But as far as you having input to the fire department, I don't think you're qualified. That's my opinion. Uh, this town is the lifeblood. I mean, these guys keep us alive. I had the misfortune of needing their services December 8th. They were there. We gotta be there for our citizens. We can't put a price on that. Get rid of the damn dollar signs. I'll pay more taxes because I've had the experience of this service. So I probably won't get Christmas cards from some of you, but I'll be okay with that. But go with the street decor. Don't mess with the street decor. <coughs> Michael, you had it in the military, right? Yeah, so when a, in the military... What do you think we did? Huh? What do you think we did? Well, yeah, but you worked as a group, and you respected each other, and you dug down and dug. You always, I always had good, even in Vietnam or wherever I was, I had good NCOICs, and when I came back to the States, I wanted to be a good NCOIC. If you treat your people right, <coughs> work day and night for you. You start messing with them, they disappear. And that's what's going to happen to our fire department. I'm sorry. I'm hot, and I'm pissed. Okay. Any other citizen yes. statements? I'm Steve Maloney, 224 Boxman Road, uh, mobile home 3C, North Brantford, Connecticut, and just addressing the flooding problems we've had with the Farm River, you know, I do think now it involves, you know, the mobile home park, but there are, in the entire course of the Farm River through North Brantford, you know, it goes through a lot of, you know, different people's properties, and uh, the flooding, it affects, flooded out, you know, to Toka Road. We've had some bad floods recently, and, uh, I think we should work together as a team to try and fix this problem, you know. And like going back to what Mr. Potter just said, like if you don't live in the mobile home park or not affected by the river, you might not understand what's, what's going on. Like I'll quote our friend Bob Dylan, don't criticize if you can't understand. And all I'm saying, please, let's work together as a team and, and fix this problem. Like, because uh, I'm just afraid, you know, the water levels might raise, come up higher and do damage to the mobile homes, and I'm worried my motorcycles might get damaged. I'm worried that my neighbors, you know, automobiles might get damaged. And just if we could work together as a team and try to, please try to, try to you know, fix this problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Rose. How are you today? Uh, how do we make out? Do you get any answer on anything about the water situation? Um, I'm. I'm going to defer to the town manager because this is something that sure. the town how the so, town council doesn't right. Again, directly work with it. You know, just so for recapping, this is a, a private property issue mostly. It's it's you know, the, there's an elevated flooding level there, um, which we're very aware of. Um, our town engineer was you know out there and was doing examining our town plan. Um, in fact, I didn't bring up our town engineer. 
again like I did last <laughs> month, um, just to get kind of an update as to what we're, what we're doing right now. Hi, good evening again. So, uh, so I did contact the state floodplain coordinator, kind of had a, a conversation with her about the, you know, the overall basically health of the watershed, watersheds in general across the town. And you know, it, it's, it's boiled down to, again, the, the weather patterns that we've experienced over you know, the past several months. And um, I, I could state that the town is over, you know, the history with the flood ordinance that we've had, that we've done a good job in, in maintaining the water course, making sure there aren't developments that go up in, the, in, in those flood zone areas that are depicted by the FEMA flood mapping. So I, I would think at this point, maybe, and if it's in the, the count, if the council uh, can maybe help us out and, and agree or, or make a recommendation that if the, the town, I certainly don't set the town manager's schedule or the town attorney's uh, schedule, but I'd be willing to, you know, get together with the, the three of us that I just mentioned and, and any of these, uh, those residents and maybe the property owner of the actual trailer park too. And we can discuss some options that they might have that I've researched through the, uh, the state uh, flood, flood control uh, scenarios that there are available funding that might be available for them to consider. And, and, and again, options that that property itself can consider and uh, maybe helping to alleviate some flooding. Okay. Um, so Mike, do you wanna just yeah, we'll, we'll coordinate that. Coordinate something and you know just keep us updated as to what happens and if, you know you can decide as to who needs to be at that meeting on there. I'm not exactly sure the town attorney needs to be there, but um, if you feel it's necessary or if he feels it's necessary, that's fine. But the property owner definitely has to be there um, because this is private property. It's not ours, but we will try to help. Um, give them resources as to what to do. Just, just a reminder for the property owners, um, bring documentation that you had at whatever meeting you're gonna have that they set up for you, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Yeah, Al Legia, 224 Foxner Road 2C. Uh, I remember when I called Kendall or I mean, the sports center was dumping gar rocks and dirt into the river and that filled it up. They had no permit because I checked on it. I called the town, no permit. And I, I just recently asked Vinnie Kendall or if he could help us with the water situation. It took time before I got him, but I had to call two, two numbers. He said, I can't do nothing for you. And I was shocked when he said that. Any other citizen statements? Okay, moving on. Uh, there's no resignations or appointments, so we are gonna move on to item 12. Unfinished business discussion and action. First item is discussion and review of the 2019 blight ordinance proposal. All right, now, Madam Mayor and Councilors, I circulated to the council last for tonight, uh, the recommendation is coming from myself and the town attorney and the town planner in our conference. Uh, this is the proposal we're submitting to you for your uh, evaluation. I know it's been a, a short uh, time. I don't really expect the council to, you know, have reviewed or uh, take any action on it this evening, but certainly available to answer any questions you might have if you have any on it tonight. Um, I'm not sure if any, I haven't had a chance to review what was sent to us um, and there is you know hard copy in our packets um, so I would if anyone has any questions you're more than welcome to ask but I would like to ask that it stay on the agenda and we can um, discuss it in more detail at our April can um, I just ask one question sure. you have zoning enforcement officer I thought we didn't have one uh, the town planner is actually sworn in as our zoning enforcement oh, okay. officer yep. the town planner is I'm glad I asked that question because when I read this, I want to publish it. Okay. All right. Um, the next item is creation of an 1831 committee. Uh, we've just asked that this 
stay on here. This is um, a committee to be formed for the 200th anniversary of North Bramford, which will be in 2031. Um, so we need to think about that, um, and that's why it's on here, um, just to, for us to, to remember to put something together and start thinking about that. Seven years will go back quicker than what you think. Um, and the next item is Town Center Committee. And Rose, at, on, on, um, on the 1831, at what point will we, do we think is the right time to start putting something together? Um, well, I know um, the town manager has sent us a, and I'm not sure you, everyone might need a refresher on like the formation of the committee yeah. and who is made up of the committee because that's the first step is to approve that what the committee will look like and what they're charged to do and then from there we can appoint people to it there's probably not much in the planning stage right now i know one of the biggest things that we talked about was um starting to budget some money towards this which we can which will actually come up during our budget talks in a couple weeks when we start. There is an account already established on the town side. So, so if we decide during budget season that we wanna put some seed money in there so that by the time seven years comes around, we have money set aside for it, we can start doing that. And then once we form the committee, the committee can decide how we're going to fund it. And that's an account that can then be used for fundraising purposes. Okay. For us. So, okay. Now on to the town center committee, and I am actually going to defer to Councillor Zampano since he is the chair of the blueprint committee, and this town center committee is a byproduct of that committee. Right, so I just, I'd like to just explain, you know, what the town center committee. Uh, would be and it's it's a committee that's going to take a portion from the blueprint committee the blueprint committees reviewing all town owned properties and what they could be what they should be or what they shouldn't be um, and then we have that big area in the uh, public works area and where the police department is which could be a town center area someday so the town um, center committee would would comprise of I don't know, uh, do we decide how many people? Five, six people? And they would um, come up with some concepts of what it could look like, maybe different variations of what could that area look like without putting a shovel in the ground. It, it's just to build a concept and present it back to the council and say, this is what this area could be, this version, this version, this version, and in what 10, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, who, who knows how long. But that's what that, that committee is <coughs> for, uh, um, that we would um, task them to do. Right. So it would be an internal study. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's. All right. So in, in our packet, the town manager put together a um, draft of it's a resolution to establish the town center <coughs> committee um and so right now the way it has and this can be changed this is just a draft so the committee shall consist of five regular members and three alternate members appointed by the town council um, <coughs> all regular members shall reside within the territorial boundaries of the town of north North Brantford without regard to voting districts. So we're not necessarily dividing it up that you have to be from district one, two, or three on there. So right now, what was proposed was that there's one regular member and one alternate member from the membership of the Blueprint Committee, excluding those members of the Blueprint Committee who also serve on the town council. So currently there are three members of the Blueprint print committee that are town council members. Um, one of the reasons we put this in this 
in the make of the resolution is because ultimately all of the town council members are going to vote on whatever is presented to the council. That's, that's where the final vote, that's where the yes or no gets done as far as the concept or the vision moving forward. So we did not want council members voting on the recommendations to come forward to the council because where their vote is going to count is when it comes before the nine of us on there. Um, so that, that's why that was put in there. It's up for discussion, um, but that's the reasoning behind that. Then there's also two regular members and an alternate that have experience in construction and or contracting. There's one regular member and an alternate from the Economic Development Commission and one regular member that has experience in the agricultural industry. Um, we chose that also because of the nature of North Brantford and Northford being an agricultural committee, a community. And so having someone in that industry, having a voice on the committee. Um, and then the ex officio membership is the um, town manager, um, the mayor or a designee. Um, so ex officio memberships do not have any voting power at the committee level. Um, and we are also asking that the director of public works participate in an advisory capacity. Um, so that's basically the makeup of the committee. So, um, and the committee is formed and would meet, they would set their meeting schedule, but have a report back to the council no later than April um, 30th of 2025. So it's roughly a year. Um, because once this is approved, then, then we would solicit names of community members to fill those positions and appoint them. So the earliest that would happen is April. It could possibly be May, but that would be the earliest um, on there. And so the only thing that, or one thing that needs to be corrected in this is that right now it has a date of April 31st. So that needs to be changed to April 30th in, in the document. Um, so. Yeah, we don't have one of those. So that day will never come. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> See, that was a trick I put in there. Yeah. Yeah. Never happened. So um, I'll open it up for discussion um, if anyone would uh, is this committee in this first year going to need funding? Um, they could um, need funding um, to, I guess it depends on what they decide. I mean, in order to get a conceptual design of what they're thinking of, they would probably need some funding in order to, to do that. We do have a number of studies that have already been done that we are, we're not doing another study. We want them to take aspects from those various studies um, that are in possession of someone in either town hall, public works, whatever, to, to use that as a basis. And then also, I mean, they would need to work with someone that, you know, it, this is their field of study. It's not just them coming up to it. So depending on what their funding, how much they think they might need, we still do have some ARPA funding left. And I think that would be a good use of ARPA money um, to put towards it. So it would not be taxpayer dollars. They would have no major it. architect though. The reality is the studies that we've done are about the center per se, they're about the town in general. There was some, one, some some things that we did in the past, but didn't really make sense. There was one from an architect that, you know, we're not considering. But I think they'd have to engage an architect and have to, you know, that that's where some of the cost would come when it comes to, you know, town build or building up a town center and then possibly working with uh, privatized, you know, development right. and, well. and whatever that is, it would have to go out to bid. Yeah. Because it's definitely over the bid threshold. Yeah. So.
So are there any other questions, comments? Uh, are you prepared to vote on the <coughs> proposed makeup of the the proposed resolution? That so was so real, they won't, this committee <coughs> will not have any spending authority, correct? Um, no, they, they would have to request funding from the council. And we, we would have to approve it and whatever it is, we would have to go out to bid on it because I don't think you're gonna get anyone under the bid threshold. Um, the, the, the I guess a, a question for the town attorney. This committee would fall under the same uh, rules as far as participants um, being on other boards and commissions as well? That's correct. Well, if if they're if they're on another if we're, if part of the makeup of the committee is someone from EDC or the Blueprint Committee, so they're already serving on another committee, so they wouldn't be able to serve on this committee. I mean, on permanent project, they're designated from other boards or commissions. That's part of the makeup of permanent project. When when there's a specific project, like if it's Board of Ed, there's Board of Ed members on the permanent project committee. Created for a special purpose, as opposed, yeah. Um, that may be the, let me take a look at that at the charter. Okay. Let me take a look at that before you okay. make a point. Okay. You can sit on until we clear that out. Okay. If you would like to table it until the next meeting, until the town attorney gets back to us, that's Fine. Yes. Motion to table. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion to table and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. So we'll put this on the agenda for next month then. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to new business. So we need to make some. Um, motions to amend the agenda. The first one is, do I have a motion to amend the agenda for item 13A, um, three I's, and it's for, to amend the agenda to add additional ARPA funding for the park rec department for the mill road field to purchase portable scoreboard, bleacher, and player benches. So moved. Second. Motion to amend the agenda has been made and seconded. All in, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Okay, and the other agenda addition, do I hear a motion to add item 13I, and it's for the STW renovations to be moved to the Permanent Project Building Committee? So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. So first item, 13A, <coughs> ARPA fund request. A, I, I would like to hear a motion. I would like to table discussion and action on additional nonprofit funding until we go through everything. So I, like to have a motion to table that until we go through everything. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and second to table 13AI. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Next item is um, a letter from Louisa Breen, who is our social services director regarding the North Brantford Community Gift Fund. Uh, Louisa could not be here tonight um, due to a family situation, but there is a letter from her in our packet um, regarding what this is. It's on page 34 of our packet. So the North Brantford Community Gift Fund was established in November of 1986. Um, it ha was funded and from 1988 
through 1992, and then after that, it has fully um, been dependent on business, private citizens, and nonprofit and fundraising activities. So the mission of the Community Gift Fund is to assist, when able, an individual or family with assistance when no other options exist and attempts with other agencies or nonprofits have been exhausted. Um, all funds assist North Bramford and Northford people, and the expenditures are made directly to the vendor. So Louisa is asking for $3,000 in ARPA funds um, to fund the community gift fund. So do I hear a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, the motion has been made by Councillor Diamond. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, second from Councillor Felicia. Okay. No. So the motion has been made to fund $3,000 from ARPA funds um, to the community gift fund. Is Can there? I just ask, yep. is there money now in this community gift fund or is it just that $780? Well, I don't, I mean, that was, that was like, that, that was originally, was never added. So what I'm trying to ask is, was that, was that ever added to? Um, well, the only thing that I can, uh, that I understand is that since the council established the fund and stopped funding it through their budget process, oh. all the money that's in there has been through private donation or fundraising activities. Okay. The council has not funded anything through their budget since 19. Okay, I was just, I, was, I wasn't sure whether there was an additional money that had ever been put in there. Um, the, there's been money because they've given out things, but it hasn't come from the council. Oh, okay. Right. On there, correct? Um, so I, I know this $3,000 um, would probably go a very long way for projects that they do. And what I like, the nice thing is, is that when they assist the town residents, the money goes directly to wherever their need is, to the vendor. Um, no, I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, so, okay, the motion has been made and seconded for 3,000 funds from, our $3,000 from the ARPA fund. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, uh, the next item is uh, item that we added at 13A I is additional ARPA funding for the Parks and Recs Department. So shortly we're going to hear from our youth sports organizations who have applied for ARPA funding through our nonprofit um, fund. And in reading through those applications, um, the North Bramford Youth Lacrosse Organization which is one of the newer uh, youth sports in town. Part of their funding request originally was uh, their field is Mill Road. Um, so it's you know not in the center of, along with some of the other fields. And they are in need of a portable scoreboard, uh, bleachers and player benches. So the, the, the field is um, pretty sparse for them right now for their activities. Um, and in talking to the president of the youth lacrosse and to Parks and Recs, um, I just thought it would probably be better suited if we pulled the expenses for those items out of their request um, for the nonprofits and allocate the money from ARPA funding directly to the Park and Rec Department so that they can buy those items for youth lacrosse. It would become town property um, and we would, this way we can use our vendors and it would meet our specs and it would be for the mill road. That, that is their playing field right now. Um, so I did um, get pricing from Park and Rec and from youth lacrosse as to how much this would cost and to provide a portable scoreboard, one 15 foot bleacher section, because they do have bleachers there now, but they're used by the players to sit on because they don't have any place to sit. 
Um, so they would just need one more and then to get some player benches so that the, they would have, the players would actually have benches to sit on. The total cost of all of that um, could be done for $5,000. So I would um, like to consider if, do I have a motion to have uh, afford $5,000 from ARPA funding directly to the Park and Rec Center for the purchase for Mill Road Field of a portable scoreboard, bleachers, and player benches. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded. <laughs> any, any discussion? Stop making fun. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, so $5,000 will be going to Park and Rec to purchase that for youth, youth lacrosse. Okay, now on to item 13B, application for ARPA nonprofit organization funding. First item is Water and Web's Water Bird Rehabilitation Center. Do we have a representative here? Okay, would you like to come forward, please? State your name. Tell us a little bit about. Hi, my name is Donna Powers, and I'm founder and president of Waterman and Webbs. I'm also a state and federally licensed wildlife rehabilitator. And we were founded in 1995, and we've always been located in Northford. Okay, and um, can you just explain a little bit to us about what uh, your request is? For and how would the, how the any funding would be used? Okay, we're requesting a, um, a website. We've never had a website, and um, it, we, we feel that we're at a disadvantage because we could reach more people um, with educational uh, content with a website. Um, for nine years, I wrote a column uh, for the Totucket Times called "Living with Wildlife." I don't know if anybody remembers. And, um, and I write articles, you know, in the advisor, sometimes in news, different newspapers. We could only reach so many people with articles in the paper. If we had a website worldwide, people could, you know, we'd answer questions and educate people. Now we're coming on what's we known as baby season. And we get um, a lot of orphaned ducks, geese, sometimes swans, songbirds, and, um, People, some people try to care for them themselves and they're not knowledgeable and the animal, we either get the animal sick or the animal doesn't survive. And with the website, we'd be able to tell people what to do if they found a baby duck before they can get it to us. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, oh, the cost, the 4,000, where did you come up with that figure for the website? Okay, there's a, um, a website company that they're called Mosaic, and I guess they work with charities, and they told us that normally it would cost $4,000, but because we're a charity, they're going to do it for 2000 half price, and then 15000 would be for internet service, and then we'd have 500 left over for other purposes. You said 15000 Yeah, internet's about fifteen. Oh, excuse me. Um, 1500 Yeah, 1500 yeah. Okay. yeah. When you say internet service, do you mean like SEO, search engine optimization, so people could find you? Oh, or yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, what you're, that's what they're talking about? Right. Okay. Because obviously you build a website, it's there, but you have to have someone that actually, you know, when they search you on Google, they can actually find oh, you. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll search, uh, we'd have a search engine. This company would do everything for us. It would also update and do every, everything. We don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. For you. Yeah, so if somebody, for instance, finds a baby mallard or an in, orphaned ill or injured animals, mm -hmm. they would um, put in duck or waterfowl and our organization would come up. Okay. Were you doing some fundraising prior to COVID? Yes, okay, we it's were. Important. Um, the, the spirit of this is if you kind of missed out on the ability to do fundraising. Mm -hmm. Well, we were in the process of raising money for a website. Yeah. And uh, the way we raise money is we have individual donations. Uh, we get it, you know, from members. Uh, we table up, table outside different stores like Walmart and uh, Agway. Now it's called Smithland. 
because they have corn and pellets and hay and things that we need. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, I also teach adult education classes at uh, the high school, Sheehan High School, okay. on helping wildlife and uh, if people want, are interested in becoming a rehabilitator or what to do if they find you know, animals that need help. And all that money you know, goes toward the, uh, the organization's needs. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Do you, do you have one question? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bruce. So do you work with the uh, town of East Haven, the animal shelter also? Uh, have you worked with them? Did you work with them? Are you planning to work Yeah, they, some, they send animals. You know, they recommend that people call us. That, so they do do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you Actually, do work with them? Yeah, we take in animals from uh, the shoreline and Northford, you know, North Bramford. So strictly just Northford and North Lamford, or are you doing? Oh no, well it's statewide, but mostly the shoreline is where we get a lot of the water birds from. So that's where your your area is, just strictly the shoreline. Is it? No, like it could Old be. Old Saybrook to. Um, a, a lot of uh, a lot of the wildlife we get come from the Brantford area. Thank you. Uh, just one quick question. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. um, how many animals do you currently have in your care? Uh, well, now we're wintering over uh, Canada goose, and we have uh, two or three mallards. But we're coming on into baby season. We get a lot of orphans. Where are you located? On Woodhouse Avenue in Northford. It's my home. You know, our vision is to have a, a real facility someday, a bit raise the money for building and really and have pools and things. Sure. Yeah. So I just I have pens in the backyard and some uh, kitty pools. Nice. Can I make do with what we have? But sure. um, again, with the website, this would, um, a lot more people could be informed and that would help the animals. I'll tell it. All right. Okay. Mayor, may I the idea is, it, regardless of where you're from, where, you know, where someone's from, if they called you, you'd help them, I guess is what I'm hearing. Well, well first, not all animals need to be rescued. So we have a phone. Um, actually, what we do is like the, uh, very similar to the uh, medical emergency service, the star of life that they have, it's detection. You know, someone will notice an animal needs help or there's a little baby duck or whatever running around their yard. Then um, they'll call us and uh, veterinarians have our number, uh, fire departments have our number, a lot of different places, you know, they can contact us. They call in and we decide whether or not the animal needs help. If the animal does, um, or if the animal doesn't need help, we tell them what to do. Like if they find a baby bird on the ground, see if you can put it back in the nest. If you can't find the nest, construct an artificial nest. Uh, baby mallard, uh, are there ducks on the water? Are there other babies? Then you just put it over a laundry basket over the bird and he'll peep and the mother will come. Uh, and if they do, we usually have someone bring the animal to us. And if not, you know, we go and rescue the animal and then keep them until they're ready to be released. I release them again. Okay. And at the same time, we have a chance to educate the person on the phone about wildlife issues. We also answer uh, phone calls about wildlife conflicts. Uh, so that helps the public too. So part of our mission statement is education. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, may I approach for a second? them first or do you want to go and just make motions as we go down in a, in a ward? So right now in in the pot what we have left in our nonprofit is thirty-three thousand dollars because we've already awarded as we saw earlier tonight. Um, and so we've already made some awards so we have thirty three thousand dollars left in our pot. Um, for 28 after Louisa. Pardon me? Twenty eight after Louisa. No, Louisa is not coming out of the nonprofit. Lu Louisa is coming out of the regular ARPA funding. I think we do it all at once. 
Okay. So you're yeah. saying we have 33 left? We have 33,000 left. Total, that's it. Total. And then, and then non-profit. Non non just in the non-profit. Right. Of what we allocated. We, we allocated 50,000 originally. We've given out three to three organizations so far. Applications are open until April 1st. Um, so, so out of the five, six, seven organizations that are on our list tonight, the total that they have requested is more than the $33,000. Um, and so far, we have not funded any organization that came to us. We have not funded their request fully at 100%. So um, we don't have enough money in the pot to award 100% to all of these organizations. So if you want to listen to them all first and then we go back and, and decide how much we're going to give to them, that's fine. Or we can just do it down the list. Right. After this list here, no one else can approach us. We're going to. The, um, the town manager for, did receive another <laughs> application today from another nonprofit. Until the 1st. So they have until, so organizations have until April 1st. And then applications are done. We're done accepting applications at that time. Should we wait till we have all of them in? Well, we, we've already given money and we've done it as they've come in. Um, so. I think we should listen to all of them. And then at the end of their uh, speech, I think we should come up with a number for each and every one of them. Okay? And then just, and then we'll all have an idea. But we have other ones possibly coming, so we yes. might need something so, for that. Yeah, so that, uh, that's so why if we wait until the end and then we decide yeah, so we what just, we get. You know, the, the idea is that we don't expend it all tonight. That we would keep some in the pot, so in case there's more applications that come in, we could address them. And then, depending on how many come, we know we have one. If we get any others, if there's still money left after we assess that, we can go back to those that have already applied because we haven't given 100%. We can go back to them and give additional funding to, to use up the pot. What, what if we wanted to, let's just, let's just say there ends up at the very end of all this, there ends up being three more. So let's, let's say there's three. And we decided, okay, we have the, the amount, the ones we have listed here and those three, and we decide let's just split it up evenly. We, we can always allocate additional ARPA funds to the not for profit too, if it gets to that point. Like okay. we need to right. throw in okay. a few because thousand dollars. Thank you. Yeah, because we have. And that we, is my question right there. Yeah. We so still we have ARPA funds left, so we could add to the pot if right. we needed to on there. But we, we've been awarding at the time of when they, rather than wait until the end, we have been awarding. So there That's, could be more. There yeah, we know, more. There's, we know there's one for sure. Because that. There is the, more money if needed. Yes, there is. There is more money. Thank you. It's needed. So, the the next five on the list um, are our youth organiz youth sports organizations: youth lacrosse, youth football and cheer, youth basketball, youth little league, and the soccer club. Um, so, these five organizations, um, rather than have each of you come up and present your I mean, we read all your applications, um, and we are so grateful for all of the volunteers that in any of these sports and serving, servicing the youth of our town, and we really appreciate everything that you do for our town. Um, in reading over all of your applications, they're basically, you're all asking for the same, for the same type of reason. So I'm just gonna ask, each one, a rep from each one of the sports organizations to come forward and we'll have you introduce yourself and the sport that you represent. And if we have any questions, then we can ask them um, of you. Um, one thing that in talking to the council members prior to tonight's meeting, we've all come to the conclusion that whatever we decide to give to one sport, all sports will receive equally. We do not want to pit one group against another. That is not our intention. And I know you all work together, you know, in your individual sports, and we don't want to put anyone into that situation at all. So if I can have a rep from each one of the sports that's here, just come up to the front and we'll just 
introduce, I think basketball had an emergency and they do not have someone here. Um, okay, I'm just, I'll form a little line here. <laughs> it's okay, guys. <laughs> and we'll just start on the end. Yep, and just in. Uh, Bona, I'm the treasurer for the North Vancouver Soccer Book. Jim Bollard, I'm the president for youth football and cheer. Christine Gerlo, president for North Vancouver Lacrosse. Amy Ferrati, uh, vice president for uh, Little League. Okay. All right. So. Does anyone, so we've all had an opportunity to read your applications. Um, so does anyone have any questions um, for them? No, I mean, I, I'm sure many of us have enjoyed playing for many of the different various sports. I played for at least three. Sorry, there's no lacrosse when, uh, when, when we were in school back in the day, although it would have been fun. Um, so I'm, I'm all for helping youth sports. I think it's something we need to take very seriously. Um, I'm also all for funding them a little bit more than what, you know, than what we maybe have in the cache here and then knowing that we can come back. I don't consider this the nonprofit pool. I think this is a, a different area in my opinion. Um, so I would encourage my other counselors to think about that. This is the fabric of our town, the reason why people move to this town and we need that. We're a town that's getting older, not younger. We need to have these type of programs in place, um, particularly in an environment now where travel sports have, have really attacked uh, youth. You want to make sure that your little league and your your youth sports are doing really well. So uh, I encourage us to uh, to consider this great greatly. And put some, some some thought towards this. These are very worthy organizations. And thank you for your time. Now, you don't do this for free. I know that you do it with all your equity of time and equity of. Uh, Family being left on, you know, on short meals and cold this and that, and we do that too, so we get that. Thank you. I, I have a question um, for for everyone, actually. Um, do you can how do how do you um, is there consideration for uh, families that might not um, financially be able to to participate? Absolutely, I know. What What does it cost for uh, a child to play one of the sports? I will say on the average, what does it cost them out of pocket? Uh, I can tell you, football just went up to uh, three hundred ninety-five dollars <laughs> from two fifty, but we we were in a loss from last year because the expenses are just going through the roof. So. Equipment's heavy. Cross had to raise for the first time in Vancouver's nation seven years and we're at two sixty-five for the seventh and eighth graders. We're only at two hundred for the third and fourth. You also have to pay for referees. Yes. yes. Which is Absolutely. a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. I, 20 years ago, my team. kids did soccer, and I was part of the soccer yeah. club. I totally know. And I'm a big believer in no child left behind. Mm -hmm. So, and that was one of my things, is that the ARPA funding that you receive that has to take care of the single mom right. who can't afford it for their child is a yeah. big, 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 big. Yeah. So any student gets the play no matter what, though. I mean, yeah. You can turn anybody down. 
Thank you. Thank you to each one of you. I've been involved with three of the programs, and and I'm I know very well that we actually paid for uh, parents who are struggling, and um, with baseball we had a few uh, parents who you know uh, passed away, and we've taken to actually consider the kids to be uh, through the whole program until they're out of age, at cost free for the next uh, I think one of them is four years. So. Um, Thank you, each one of you, because I know how much time. And uh, Mr. Moore, thank you, because I know you're trying to rebuild a program that has uh, fallen yeah, very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Christine, you, you're doing a good job over there. And Jim, thank you. And Amy, you know, you're doing your best. Thank you. Each one. <laughs> and with basketball, I know I was involved. I was on the board for basketball too, so I was involved with everyone in sports, and no one's here to represent that. They struggled this past year. Yeah, basketball's and, not on this, is it? Yes, they are. They are. It, she just said that. Oh, okay. It's 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 an emergency. But um, whatever you, we decide, you deserve that plus more, which we probably can't give you, but just to let you know that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hard part is getting the accounts to sit there and balance here. That is the hardest part. I'm already signed up. Um, I'm coaching, yeah, I'm coaching oh, either right? t-ball or softball. I don't I know which one. I see your name on the uh, list. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Um, but yes, come see me after because I'm going to ask you about it. Yes. Um, I think we need to um, revert back to this on the uh, item discussion and action portion of this. I'd like to see us pull some money out of regular ARPA into this. I'd like to see every organization here get $7,500 to go towards the group, make sure that we're taking care of these kids, make sure we're taking care of these uh, these uh, folks here that are that are giving up their time. Um, that's why I think it wouldn't take a lot, I think we can do it with an additional 20K infusion from the other ARPA monies. I mean, this is what it's been, this is exactly what ARPA was put so together for. Yeah, it was to help roads and, and uh, bridges and things such as that, but organizations that could not run during COVID, could not fundraise, <coughs> which, these are the organizations that were able to do that. These are the ones that impact our kids, which are most vulnerable to be bored and doing other things. So um, that's my take. I would strongly suggest that we follow on that. Yeah, well, piggybacking on that, just asking all of you, between COVID, not being able to have sports, not being able to fundraise for sports, how much do you think ballpark each program's lost out on monetarily? We yeah. probably lost a good fifteen to twenty thousand yeah. dollars just in sponsorships because the sponsors didn't really come back. Right. Um, so it, it's pretty much that that has really hurt us a lot. We still we're still able to fundraise to some extent, but the sponsorship is what we really relied on. Uh, and it, even if we give them a sign or anything like that, you know, we give them stuff on the website. It's it's still just not enough anymore. So. How much does it cost to outfit one football player? Well. Uh, it's hard to say. In fact, I, we have the shoulder pads are probably about eighty-five dollars a piece. A new helmet is about three hundred and ninety-five. We we recondition all the helmets every year, which costs sixty-five dollars per helmet, and that means we're in the neighborhood of a hundred helmets that we send out. Um, pants are probably another sixty-five dollars, which we usually try to give them two pairs of pants. We give them our practice pants and a game pants. Um, we even give out mouthpieces, but that we get from uh, a local dentist who donates them for us so that we make sure that they're shot and doctored and their safety and all of that. Um, but I mean, all in all, when you include referees, insurance, um, you know, so a lot of times we have to rent lights because we don't have an actual field and we have to practice at night because when we're practicing, it's dark at five o'clock things of that nature, it, it probably, it's probably in the neighborhood of, of four or $500 per, per person. That's football. We also have flag and cheer, which is less, but maybe, maybe two thirds of that, a third of that maybe. So yeah, it's, it's, um, so you're it's an expense. About $150 a student. A yes. Yeah. That's what we, we ran in the, we were in the red for about, uh, I want to say, uh, 2,500 last year which we were lucky. I mean, we run a golf program or a golf uh, outing every year that we make around $6,000 for. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do still have some donations like Sportsplex gives us money and, and time and whatnot. So we do have some sponsors that came back, but 
you know, some of the, the get dedicated ones, but then there's some that still just give us, like we used to get thousand dollars from some place and now they give us a hundred. So it's, it's, it's been- Not time to turn into. Yeah, it's been tough. Yeah. It's been very as far tough. as the soccer goes, are you, you're not using uh, South Central. You don't use South Central anymore, do you? No, the uh, premier clubs have like exploded beyond South Central. There's- Mom, like, my daughter was, she was South, she was a premier yeah. player for South no, Central. Now, so. now there's like four or five teachers from the area. Yeah, so, so we battle, participation is probably our biggest battle. We have, uh, there was a season, we were, we were at under 100 participants mm. in the fall of 2020. We're at 75. This is all age groups, yeah. right? It's not so you're at 75 right now? No, no, we were. We just built this, well, a new board took over, me and myself, I think Terry Mishin, who's like Sharp, two other youth, uh, you know, younger parents with, Actually, we all played in, in the town growing up. Mm -hmm. Now we live here. Um, mm -hmm. And so now we're, we, we got back up to like 185. Nice. So we got wow. Nice. Good again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've like almost tripled. Good yeah. Job. yeah. yeah. Girls Travel's again. doing well. My daughter plays. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, no, so we're moving in the right direction. Um, we started getting sponsorships. But so we never had a sponsor in the past, right? Um, so uh, it was really, we, we actually offered a free clinic to boost. The first time we took over, we offered a free <coughs> clinic. Uh, just to get people to come play, um, so we ate that, and uh, it's, it's worked out. But uh, there's still a lot of the old equipment that we're trying to kind of replace. And now that we're going to have travel teams, we just got to get the fields and equipment up, up to par, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I get it. Same thing. We're we're at an all time low for participation. We from kindergarten to eighth grade, boys and girls, we're only at 110. We have kindergarten to second grade. Boys and girls, we only have nine kids. So I run a, a Sunday morning clinic with my son, who's a freshman, and took some of the other high school kids to help out, and, and we literally only have nine kids this year. Last year, I think we had 20, but they were the older kids, like a classroom. We had third graders doing the clinic that we're trying to do. <coughs> get the message out to the parents too because yeah. ultimately yeah. at that age you have to get the parents to and go oh it's the husband too because parents don't want to pay for a ticket that they think the child will live in for one year i mean yeah. across the states we do a lot of stuff too doesn't look 
looks like they put the same thing. There's a helmet for ten hundred dollars, a stitches average one twenty, shin guards, chest protector. It adds up. Yeah. So my son's playing for the first time. I played I played four years of high school and um, I've been trying to get him to play. He's going into eighth grade and uh, he finally agreed to do it and I'm I'm in for over seven hundred at this point. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's, it's no it's, joke. It's, it's not surprising though. It's no, I know. Don't, uh, don't start hockey. So I, I, I think we're stealing all the kids' fun because our numbers have exploded. That's amazing. In a week. And I you are that, stealing all the kids' fun. They're very They all play softball. <laughs> so our girls, That's great. mostly our girls, yeah. we had next to no girls 2020, and now we have added on two additional girls softball teams, and I'm so, so happy. So it's right. Uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Well, we, we really appreciate everything that the youth, all of the youth sports do for our town. And um, we appreciate you coming <coughs> forward to let us know of your needs. Um, so we have, if there's no other questions, we're just gonna move on to the next one and then we'll come back to um, deciding. Thank you. Um, Thank you for all you do. I, I was there, I know. I did it. Is that Earth Day? That's not, is that Earth Day? Is it last year, April 20th? Yeah. Is that Earth Day? April yeah, 20th? They, they, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. They, always, they always have someone there. I know, I'm there. Okay, and the last one is the North Bramford Food Pantry. Hi, I'm Linda Delico, the present treasurer. And um, we were approved as a nonprofit in 2014 and actually opened our doors in 2015. And beginning with COVID and kind of exasper exacerbated by raging inflation, we have had uh, quite a challenge keeping our shelves filled in recent days and years. Um, we have the... Um, the normal operating costs of keeping the pantry going, which most of you guys have, and keeping your homes going. Um, but by far, their greatest challenge has been the food. Um, during the worst of COVID, um, Connecticut Sh Food Share, who we're affiliated with, had severe um, <coughs> supply chain issues. Uh, which resulted in us kind of segueing into uh, more and more retail purchases. So we're kind of a hybrid at this point with um, support from Connecticut Food Share, um, yet still doing a good deal of retail uh, shopping. Um, our demand has also increased dramatically. Uh, we're currently assisting between 60 and 65 families per week. Um, and I usually work um, at least one day a week there, and I sign up somebody new almost every week. So um, the, the need continues to increase for sure. Um, if you did read the application that our president had uh, completed and submitted, you know what kind of a job the volunteers did during COVID. So if anyone has any questions about that period or what's going on now, feel free. Well, I, I know that the application that your president, Rita Ney, um, submitted to us, in my mind, had a very low figure. 
um, listed on it. And I know she was being very conscious of the fact that there were other groups that were also applying for money and did not want to ask for an excessive amount of money. In my opinion, the food bank deserves more than what they asked for I on their application. So. Um, so I think that is something that we need to consider um, when we take some action tonight mm -hmm. is that in my mind, they should get more than what they asked for. Uh, I, I, I we we would that. certainly uh, appreciate it. If you haven't volunteered there, I'd, I'd encourage you to do so. Um, my wife and I volunteer there once in a while and we, we've also donated personally. This is, you, you don't think of North Brantford having people that are food insecure, but we do. Uh, we have plenty of people that need that that bolster and they need that and those nutritions and someplace to get that so it, it's important to uh i agree i think that it was uh, yeah but I don't, I don't would also like to include a big positive here and just remind everyone that we live in a very generous community i mean the the pantry is funded 100 percent through donations and um, the community always comes through for us it's fantastic can I ask about the facility? How's, how's it working? I've heard different stories where you've had difficulty because of location, because of traffic or whatever. How is that going for you? I, I wouldn't say traffic is a real issue. Um, we're in the basement of St. Andrew's Episcopal right. Church, so um, it's, it's, there's a lot of lifting involved. Um, and it's difficult going down the stairs because it's an old building and so the, the stairs are steep. and. Um, a lot of our volunteers, and I include myself in that number, are rather elderly, and so, you know, we, we, we do have issues, that, that's for sure. Yeah, and, and as well, some of, you know, some of our shoppers um, have difficulty. Um, you know, that's we have a handful who can't yeah. make the stairs, and so they'll call or we'll go out to the car and they'll, give us an order, but they're not able to actually shop because of the, um, the access issue. Yep. So. That's something we'll address in the future. When, when people donate um, food, there, are there certain things that are better to donate than others? Well, we have um, a Facebook page and Rita uh, posts every week what, what we need, um, but I mean, off the top of my head, we always need cereal. We always need tuna fish. Um, okay. You know, um, anything. Uh, we we check expiration dates on everything. Yeah. So I mean, occasionally we, we will have somebody who just cleans out their cabinets, and you know, everything's a bit dated, and that you know, we we end up throwing it out. But that's I I, I mean most most people are, you know, they they they've either proactively shopped for the pantry or you know they're they're giving in good faith and it's it's something usable so mm -hmm. okay. okay you don't just do food do you you do don't you do uh, coats for kids and things like that also um only if we get them as a donation i mean we don't the the rotary and the social uh, services right. do do more of that right um, around the holidays, right? The yeah. food pantry, their basic is is food donations. Food, right. food, food is the, the yeah. our primary, okay. obviously. Yeah. 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 Like that. So. yeah, but we do occasionally get. I mean, you might have heard somebody say they got yes a piece of clothing from the pantry well, because it, we we do get some funky donations. And I mean, if it's if it's something serviceable, we're not going to refuse it. Well. Try and put it to good use. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, before we take any action on this, we're going to go back to item 13A1, which we tabled discussion and action on additional <coughs> nonprofit funding. Um, so, I know uh, the deputy mayor. Yeah, so I, I think we, I'm just trying to do numbers. We think. We can accomplish what we need with the initial three five. It doesn't matter what we put in there because we can always go back. But we yeah. could we could we could probably if we put an additional twenty thousand in there, we could fund the sports 
um, at a little higher level than what we originally talked about, and we could fund uh, the food pantry for more than the request. I would say I make a motion that we uh, extend the. Excuse me. You have to make a motion to or take it from the table first. I'm sorry. You have to make a motion to take oh, it from to the, take table. It off the table. Off the table. We tabled it. Oh yes. Uh, motion to take it this off, um, an item off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Opposed? Oh, 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 it, it's I just. Hang on. We're doing. We're, we're just taking it off the table. Okay. First. We're just. Yeah. We're okay. just taking the motion off the, to table this item. So now we put it back on the agenda. Okay. So And you want yeah. I'll, I'll put it in discussion. Once I put it into motion, yeah. second, then yeah. discussion. Okay, so I'll make a motion that we increase the uh, budget for, or the allocated budget for nonprofit with an additional 25,000 in ARPA funds. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Discussion. I would like to discuss possibly all of these ARPA funds here, tabling all of this and us having a special meeting and discussing exactly what we're gonna give everybody because now we're just coming up with different numbers and realizing we wanna give more. We're kinda now, we're, to me, it just seems like we're kinda winging it. We're, like we're, we're, we're kinda blowing with the wind and changing. We're definitely not, I, I think it's actually gonna benefit everybody else, everybody more, but we're just sitting here right now, we're just throwing numbers and we have other people that are gonna be asking for more money too. I, myself, like I was saying before, I would like to have, every, everybody's making great presentations, have all of those presentations in front of us, and then us sit down with what we intend on putting aside for all of this, and then saying, okay, this is what we wanna do with it. Instead of right here, just dropping it all on the table, and you know, instead of rushing into this, let's make it where we all agree on this and have, I think we should have like a special meeting. And I, I, I'm not in favor of a special meeting just for this because we, the other three organizations that we've already donated money or gave, you know, we decided that night when they made their presentation and we had their application in advance and we made a decision that night um, for those three. And I feel that I, I'm ready to, to make a vote tonight on it um, I don't I don't think we need a special meeting um, because it, if there's money left over in the pot at the end we can come back to all of these organizations that put an application in and we can fund them at another we can add more you know give them more money than what we gave them tonight and those that we already approved too that everyone would be back into the pot and we've talked about that too doing that coming back with just just me making up numbers right now let's just say we were going, going to give somebody a hundred dollars and we're going to vote on that now so let's just say in my mind i don't want to give a hundred dollars i want to give a thousand dollars so when we take the vote everybody votes yes for the hundred i vote no because i don't agree with the hundred because i want to give a thousand <laughs> so it's like you, you know what I mean? No, I like, get you could bring that up, and that's why we're discussing well, we, now. You wouldn't, you wouldn't bring it up. You'd be like, okay, want to give so and so a hundred dollars? Everybody says yes, and I say no. I, I don't. No, I don't. I'm, I'm voting because I want to give more, right. or it could be less. But yeah, <laughs> it seems in hindsight, we might have, we might have uh, handled this improperly overall because we set a deadline to April first. We probably, I mean, I mean, just my opinion, we probably should have waited to April first. Got everybody who, who who's asking for, yeah, for some some funding, and then and then did it. But unfortunately, we didn't do that. That that's just yeah. You the, the, know, unfortunately, and and I don't know. You know, because I I I I feel you know kind of similar to how you feel, Walt. I, but I I don't know how, what we do now. But um, but it is kind of. Uh, just, it just seems it's kind of haphazard. Very sloppy. Yeah, it's, it's really it sloppy. Yeah, I, I can tell you my reasoning behind the number that I came up with. I looked at all the numbers together, and I because we wanted to, we didn't want to make one sport versus another have you know a larger uh, piece of the pie. So we wanted to make sure it was impactful for each one. So I looked at the mean of what was asked for. So there are some that asked for more, some that asked for slightly less, and I put it within the mean. And that came up to about 7,500. That's where my buffer office was. And, and knowing that, you know, there is the 
possibility that you know we'll have extra dollars. We don't want to we don't want to leave funds in ARPA, uh, you know, pile because they're going to get called back, and we're going to then and then no one gets something goes off. Well, there, there is definitely no risk that there's going to be any money left. So I don't, I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think that's a risk well, at saying, all. But we're we're I'm almost surprised that we're not done with them now. Yeah. Because <laughs> most towns. So if, I think if, yeah, but that's um, not. I think if we went with five <coughs> across the board for each sport they can actually come back because we're actually if you want to go and put an additional twenty five thousand dollars in there that would give us um we, we still have money left though i think we can still put it in later and right now if we go and we give them each five we're not spending everything that's in the in the pot right now but we can always revisit it that's something that, because it's going to come back. And I think that, yes, we should take care of them. But I think what, what we have in there right now is what we should use. And then go and say, okay, what's left? We can add to more of it. They can come back and ask for more. It's exactly what we had talked about originally. Well, they wouldn't have to come back and ask for more. No, we could just actually because give they, it to them. they have applications. Right. So, so, so if I could just put something to. in perspective, just to kind of give an overview on this, right? So we had 33 going into tonight. If we approve the 25, it brings us to 58. And I'm just using the 5,000 because it's easier. But if we gave 5,000 to each sport, that's the 25,000 we just entered. We still have the 33 left over from where we started tonight. So right. I, I, that's I did um, the same numbers. Even if you know, even if we went to the 7,500, we're still. We're still in a good spot. We still have a substantial amount left over for for other people as well. So, what are we talking about for the food pantry? I've gotten there yet. Oh, what? I don't think we've gotten there yet. Oh, we haven't. So I'm just trying to put it all together. Okay, we haven't talked about that yet. Right. So I would why. definitely like to give that food pantry more. So, so Anthony, what's what's left? In, what's actually left? In what? In ARPA. Oh, what do we have left in ARPA? Thirty-three without the total. No, no, no. In, no total. In, oh, in the oh, other okay. ARPA fund. At 184,996 going in tonight, if you knock the 5,000 off for Louisa, you're at. Uh, Louisa was three. Louisa. So we did we did 8,000 between Louisa and Park and Rec. So that was 8,000 tonight. So it was 183. So we're down to 175. So we're down to approximately 175. So if we give them an, if we do another 25,000, we're down to 150. Right. I see the number. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So well, plus change, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so the motion is on the floor to allocate an additional twenty five thousand dollars from ARPA funding into the nonprofit. Did anybody second it? Yeah. Yeah. So is there any more discussion? What's the motion? To allocate twenty-five thousand dollars from ARPA funding to go into the nonprofit pool. So we can fund the sports teams and the, and the food pantry, <coughs> which is a total of what? And, and the water well, as well. Let's not forget that. Be thirty-seven five for the for the sports teams, plus we did what we decide to sit there and give to uh, uh, the. The waterfowl and also uh, the food pantry. Right. So, so by putting twenty five in there, we definitely oh, yeah. have enough in there, and we still have money left over. So, if there's any more applications, which we know there's one, if there's any additional ones, we would have money in there to allocate. And if we still have money left over, we can go back to people that have made that we've already allocated. Money. So I'm going to um, call the question and take a vote on this additional 25,000. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. One, uh, one abstention. So it's 801. Or I should say, did any oppose? Does anyone oppose? 
saying whether I want to give more or less. I, I just think we're, the way we're doing this is wrong, and I'm, that's why I'm voting the way I am, because I, um, just, some, I think some people deserve more money, and some people maybe deserve less, and I'd like to talk about it more as a council, but I'm just going to abstain from the whole thing. That's why I'm voting the way I am. I, I think we always rush in everything. I think it'd be more fair to everybody out there and the other people, <coughs> and I won't say any more, and that's just how I'm going to okay. vote the way I vote. And I just, I just want to make one comment too. Anything we, we approve is more than they had yesterday. So we have to keep that in mind too. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, that's it, that's all, I, that's all I want to say. <laughs> okay. All right. So the motion is on the floor for $7,500 to the five. Uh, youth leagues, uh, sports leagues, and it was seconded. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 abstain. Opposed? And one abstention. So the motion passes zero <laughs> one. Congratulations to all of the yeah, youth sports. Okay. So there are um, uh, kind of rules as far as to get reimbursed for these things and um, our finance director, Anthony, can you just kind of... Yeah, he's going to be at the W-9 pre-organization they have on file, the tax ID numbers. Mm -hmm. We can use the minutes of the That's meeting as, as your authorization, but you can run up there with a letter to yeah. order that that's fine as well. Can we do them together? No. We'll, do, we'll go back to so item B. This other one here. Yeah, we're going to do that right so, now. So, so now we're going to do Water and Web's Waterbird Rehabilitation Center. All right. I'll make a motion to award, and again, this is up for discussion. I'll make a motion to award uh, Water and Web's Waterbird Rehabilitation Center, Inc., uh, an amount of $1,500 for the um, the assistance in building out a website. I'll second that. Discussion? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know where we're coming up with that number. Because that was basically what she said. I think she could probably do it for with a um, discount. Yeah, the, the, the total, no, bill was, was, total bill was 2K. That was 2K? Uh, for the, the build out of it. Um, we're looking holistically, so we're looking at pantry and waterfall together for the remaining. I, I would be okay with amending mine to a different number to, to do the 2K to cover the website. Oh, I, thought I don't it was know fine. if we've... I'm sorry, I thought it was one. Can, can I say something? Sure. So, um, the website is on
you don't have internet service, do you mean you don't have Wi Fi? No. You don't have the Wi Fi? I've never had a website. No, I know, but why? That's a different thing. I just want to make sure I'm clarifying what you're asking for. Having a website is having a build out of your uh, your address, your, your location on the web. Mm -hmm. Having Not having internet is indicative of not having the ability to access internet at the facility. Meaning, is there no Wi Fi at the facility? Do you not have, I know it's your home too, so, but so I'm not, I don't know if it's part and parcel part of your home to website or web abilities or I should say internet capabilities, but is there Wi Fi or internet available at that facility now? No, because my sister tries to get uh, to use her computer there, and you can't. And okay. then my mom has a caregiver come over, and she tries to do things on the computer. Okay, so you don't you don't can't. currently have any any Wi-Fi at the home. No, we're hoping the cell tower is going to help that. Even with the cell phone, you have to go outside. Well, you have yeah, to, that's you, different though. Yeah. So that yeah. that would be with your cell phone. Your cell phone typically comes with a data package, so that's why you have Wi-Fi there. But if you were to plug in a, a a computer at your house. The only way that you're going to have, whether it be a laptop, a desktop, or you know, even your phone without its cellular signal, you have to have a, an internet connection from Comcast or Frontier or whatever the one that is by you. You have to pay for that service for one of those, um, and that's going to be a you know like a monthly charge, like your cable bill and stuff like that. Typically, like a triple play package they do, whatever they call it. Um, so that's, that's what you're looking for. You're looking to fund having the ability to have internet to the home and to the, to the facility of which you're keeping the animals? Right, and also to even work on the website. You know, I have to see what you're doing and, you know, what's going on with it. Yeah. Okay. So this is Mosaic. They're out of Brantford, right? Yeah, they, they, they go to the, um, there's an animal fair. No, I know. I, he's, his office is in Brantford. Yeah, yeah, he works right, with some charity. So at, this is your, is, so once again, this is your home or your mother's home? Or is it, whose oh, home mother, is this? My mother's home. But I live so this is at your mother's house? Yeah. And she doesn't yes. have Comcast or Frontier internet at the house? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. A lot for time. Something else. <clears throat> I, I retract my um, my motion huh? so we can yeah. further discuss. What, what, this is in, is this in Northford? Yes. Yeah. What house is that in? Okay. I'd like to up it to two thousand dollars, and yep. I think that's from what we've heard. I think that's great. I I. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I go back to what I said before. I think we're. We we kind of make made it. We we mixed up what we're doing here. We don't even know what we're giving money to. I mean, let's face it. That's why we ask questions. Yeah, I, I understand that, but we should come out here ready to take action and understand what we're doing. And I don't know that we're we're uh, demonstrating that, in my opinion, for the whole thing. So, but we, we started the process. I understand that, but that doesn't and mean that doesn't mean you keep if you're going the wrong way down a road, and you notice the one way sign, you stop, right, and you turn around, and you regroup. <coughs> and I think we're, uh, I just think we're, uh, that's where we're at right now. I, 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 I hear it in all our voices. We're we're, we're trying to figure out what's what. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, but you can, but you can't make a decision before you come out not knowing what it is, and we just found out tonight when we had the right. Discussion. So then, so then, so then maybe we should, you know, there's, there's a time that I think we should table this table for it. this particular yeah, one. Rethink it. Rethink what we're doing. You know, we're we're winging numbers here: a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, four thousand. Mike, can I ask you a question? Does this program qualify? The yeah, whole qualify. All the way? The registered 501c3, other than that. Oh, okay. What are we talking about? Just want to make sure. I, I understand. I, that was my question. <coughs> so. Strange things. This is. 
unusual. Uh, Something can we, I'd like to revisit this one. That's fine. Motion I'd, I'd, I'd like the motion to table. Second. Oh, okay. So, so the motion to fund for fifteen hundred was retracted, so that's not. Yeah, I'd like so to put a motion so to table this. So let's vote on that one first. Oh, okay. The motion was retracted, and the second was retracted. There's no motion. It wasn't oh, okay. right now. It wasn't. Okay, so there's no motion. Okay, so. I would. I second. I retract. Okay. Okay. So the that motion has been retracted. So there's no action on that. So right. if there, if I, someone wants to make a motion to table. I'd like to put a motion to table. Second. Okay. Motion to table the Water and Webb's Waterberg Rehabilitation Center um, application um, to table. Any discussion? Further discussion? I just. Okay. I think we should ask the uh, applicant to send us some more information. I don't think we have enough information based on the application. I think what? we need to clarify exactly what that means, website, and what so it means. So you want more of a detail? Yeah. Detail. A, a breakdown? Okay. Yeah, that's fair. So if we could ask um, you to submit to the town manager a breakdown of that $4,000 request, exactly what that would go for. Um, and then we will table this and just put it on our next agenda, which is April 2nd. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So um, we'll take a vote on tabling. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. So that is tabled. And the last one is the North Ramford Food Pantry. Do we feel comfortable that we know what they do? Absolutely. Okay. Do we feel comfortable that we can come up with a number? Because if that's the case, I'm going to. I'm going to make a motion. Again? They asked for a thousand. Oh. And I'm going to make a motion we that we fund it. the North Ramford Pantry uh, at. We talked about seventy five hundred. We can. Yeah. That, we can always come back. I, to I, I think later. we always yep. come back to it being a little larger, but at, at seventy five hundred dollars. And spirit of ARPA. Yep. I can tell you right now firsthand that they mm -hmm. put a tremendous amount of effort during that COVID, during COVID, and it continues now. You still have a lot of families that are that need food. So is there a second? I'll second. Oh, okay. Oh. So the motion was made by Deputy Mayor McMillan, second by Councillor Diamond, to award North Brantford Food Pantry $7,500. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I abstain. Opposed? Abstentions, one. Motion passes, 801. Okay, we're ready to move on to item C, authorization of South Central Mutual Police Assistance Compact. I'll make a motion to accept and ask the town manager to sign the South Central Connecticut Mutual Police Assistance Compact. Second that. <coughs> okay. Um, any discussion? Um, can I ask a question? Sure. What is it? Um, just, just. It's, it's basically a mutual aid agreement when officers work in other towns or they're called into other towns, how they're covered, who pays for it, and whatnot. And I don't know, is it annually that it needs to be? Okay. Three. That's okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. I'm all good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It's all. Right. Just. And this is a the, modification of the current agreement. Uh, going, so. yeah. I mean, we, we do it all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Next one is item D, amending the Stanley T. Williams Roof Bond Resolution. <laughs> Uh, quickly, there was uh, two funding sources for the Stanley T. Williams roof project. One was a grant, and the balance was bonded through a resolution that you folks passed a while back. 
Uh, as it ends up, there's some uh, additional available funds and a list was comprised by the uh, recreation director as items that uh, potentially could be covered by that surplus money that was already bonded towards the Daling T. Williams School. However, to do that, you need to amend the bonding resolution because the industrial resolution was specific to the roof project. So you can't do something outside of the roof project unless you guys amend the resolution. So the list was forwarded to the manager, forwarded to me, I sent it to the bond council, and they provided the revision to the resolution that you have in front of you. And again, once you guys pass that, uh, the money could be spent for these means as well, besides just the roof project. Okay, so the motion is on page 85 of our packet. be it hereby resolved that the North Brantford Town Council, based on the availability of funds from the original bond resolution for the STW roof project, votes to adopt the resolution entitled Resolution Amending a Resolution Appropriating $2.8 million for the planning, design, construction, installation, and replacement of the roof at Stanley T. Williams Community Center and authorizing the issuance of $2.8 million bonds of the town to meet said appropriation and pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose no, in its entirety. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Just a reminder on this project, the total cost that was bonded was 2.8, but we received 1.6 million from the state to go towards this project, which covered the roofing of the project. And we bonded more in case there were any other additional costs and also to cover um, carry so, costs. So how much was it, 1.2 less? Or is it 500? Uh, no, well it would be, roughly $800,000 on there. Um, if you take the 1.6 off of the 2.8, so it's, um, it's 1.2. 1 1.2, but I, I don't think there's 1.2 that is available. Right, Anthony? Okay. <coughs> And that includes all of the carrying, I mean, architectural fees and the down costs. Okay. So there's 1.3 left? Roughly 1.3, yes. Okay. So they, there's a whole list of items. I that, saw the items. Right which at this point in time, once we move this project over to permanent project, per permanent project will oversee okay. these, okay. all of these things, and Park and Rec has two members on the building committee. Okay, that I got it, we're good. Them. Okay. So we voted on it, right? Oh. Yes. Okay. Next item is review and approval of library job descriptions. Good evening, everyone. Lauren Davis, library director. Before Rory joins me up here, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to the town council and to the town manager for <coughs> recognizing Donna Wiedemann for her many years of service to the children and families of North Brantford. It's very much appreciated, so thank you for doing that. 
Uh, before you, you have updated job descriptions for our 14 part-time non-union library workers and our five full-time union member librarians. Um, I'll start with the part-time job descriptions first. We currently have three different classification levels for our part-timers, uh, but they all share the same job description. So we are putting to paper the different qualifications needed, the different knowledge, skills, abilities, the different roles and responsibilities um, for something that we are currently doing in practice, but we don't have separate job descriptions for them. I'm realizing it's also coming in um, to importance when people are trying to be promoted. There's nothing that outlines how you can um, be promoted or upgraded to the next level. Um, and the five full-time job script or five full-time librarians share one very outdated job description, um, which we are learning as we are trying to recruit new um, librarians. We have a position that was just filled with our children's librarian. The job description basically says everybody does a little bit of everything, which is not the case. Libraries have evolved in the 25 years since that job description was written. So I've made it that they're more focused on their area of service or their area of specialty. So you'll see that the one job description went from just the title of librarian to children's services, adult services, and technical services. So essentially before you are two job descriptions that are being updated into six different ones, one for the three part-timers and then one for the three full-timers. Okay. I, I, can make, I can make a motion. Yep. To approve the job descriptions as presented for one, adult services librarian, two, children's librarian, three, technical services librarian, four, library assistant, five, library technical assistant, and six, library technician. Make a second. Okay, the motion was made by Councilor Diamond, second by Deputy Mayor McMillan. Any questions? I just, just one comment. I think they're great, but the only thing is, based on what our town manager has told us, you need to change the um, the logo on the top. The logo. <laughs> we've, we've already spoken. It's the old logo. <laughs> emblem. Emblem. Yeah. Emblem. Yes, the emblem. Yeah. The emblem. Yeah. Very doable, right, Rory? I mean, I think you Thank guys you. did a wonderful Thank job you. for this community. You do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now we can look forward to the next step. Yeah. 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 Nice. Thank you. There's nothing wrong with 97. No. <laughs> Good year, you know it. That's right. I <laughs> but we've come a long way. So thank you very much. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay, on to item F approval of revised. High school dedication plaque. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Madam Mayor, this uh, item is appearing back before you, um, as I noted in my memo to the council, after the council had approved the, the plaque in December, I noticed that there were a couple of individuals that were on the board of bed during the period of time in which the project was approved and now um, who were not included. Um, Permanent Project Building Committee had approved the plaque previously, and of course they have representatives from the Board of Ad on there, and I think the presumption was that they had represented those interests. Um, but uh, noticing that, I did a revision. It also went back to, uh, to make sure that they're included. I also included um, members of the, who were on the town council afterwards, Deputy Mayor McMillan, and then Vincent Mace, who also happened to serve on the Board of Ed during that period of time. So. The idea of this whole plaque was to capture everybody who from the approval of the project to the completion was involved. So in doing that, I wanted to make sure that those names were captured and that's why it ends up back before you tonight just to get your uh, approval to make sure that everybody's kind of captured. I did review all these with the town clerk just to make sure I didn't miss anybody um, during that period of time from the approval and uh, we've got everybody. The, Further, the Permanent Project Building Committee met last night. They made a couple of recommendations, which are before you, which I gave an additional memo to you, too. Um, they wanted to include um, Public Works Director Fran Marola, which I think is a, a great idea to include. Franny has a lot invested Absolutely. in this project. Yeah. Perfect to include, include him in the, in the project plaque, and I'm 
sorry to say I didn't think of it myself, um, but uh, he certainly should be on there. The other was to remove the former town manager, Michael Paulus. Um, he was involved at the onset of this project, so I do think it's appropriate to keep him in there. That that's submitted for your approval tonight. On there. Deputy Mayor McMillan has made a point that when he was on the Board of Education, he was part of the permanent project building. You're going to put me on the board. Yeah. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm on there twice, so I don't really need to be on there twice, but. Well, yeah, it was on the, it was you, on you did bring years. it up to me. Yeah. Well, you want to oh, so should we three times? No, I'm you just saying it doesn't make times. sense why I'm on there <laughs> yeah. twice <laughs> if I'm already on there. Yeah, I'm missing it. Oh, oh so okay. we should take I you off the board of ethics. Yeah, you all together. Jeff, I didn't see it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't see it over there. So Fine, just... but. <laughs> you can take my place if you like. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> So, fourth or fifth, maybe. I, I was thinking I could be on there for past <laughs> deputy mayor, right? <laughs> 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 it's repetitive. Yeah, no, it's accurately repetitive. Maybe bigger plaque. Okay. <laughs> so, do I have do, a, do I have a motion to approve the plaque design as presented in our that was at our desk tonight? It's been updated to include all members. Um, and to add the director of public works. But not exclude yeah, Michael. I not exclude Michael. No. So, so I have I have a question though. Mm -hmm. When I look at the um, the members, is that is that accurate? The members of the town council. Yeah. Yes. You mean yeah. as to who was on during this time frame? Yeah. Yes. Because Lou Padanoster was on, and then Tara Downs took his place when he. Passed. Joe Fawnen was on. Al wasn't on. I did. No, no, that was no. Right. No, he was, no, he was gone before that. Um, and the, what's his name? Anthony. 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 wasn't on. No, 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 no that was wait. before. Yeah, when when the project was approved. So how long you been? They might they might have been on when we well, they were, not were initially <laughs> discussing it, but when we actually had to take the vote. Okay. All right. They, I were, just, they were not there. I, I did verify those with the town clerk just to make sure we had terms of service from when the vote was cast, which I think was November of 21, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Two, two. And then going forward to now. So, you know, right. everybody was serving on the council during that time frame. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, re I re actually remember the vote. Yes. <laughs> it was yes, yeah. it was. Yes. Right. Okay. So, do we have a motion <laughs> to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the plaque as presented by the and reviewed by the uh, building committee, along with having Jeff and Dylan on there twice. No. <laughs> <laughs> you take that out of the motion. <laughs> Did I have a second? Are we keep the second. Yeah. Are we removing Paulus? No, we're keeping. Sure. Okay. And we're keeping Jeff. Tommy's taking his second. No. Um. Yeah, because Vince Mace is on there twice. He's under the council and under the Board of Education. So, yeah, he's good. Yeah. Yeah, a nice yeah. Great. Okay. So, is there a second? I, yeah, it's Tommy. Yeah. Oh, Tommy. Uh, okay. You seconded it. Did you? Yes. After all that discussion? No, I. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Marie made the motion <laughs> and Tom um, seconded? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstain? Motion passes. And just, so, and just so I'm clear, this is the version that adds Fran Marola, correct? And it does not permit Correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. correct? Yeah. 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 recommendation. We've done yet. Pardon me, I did. Jeff was talking to me. Yeah. He I does was, this uh, all the time. I understand how that can be. I understand how that can be. The, uh, Good I was just clarifying that um, the version of the plaque that you're approving, it does add Fran Marola on. Correct. But it does not omit Michael Paul's. Correct. 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 Okay, very good. Got it. Okay. 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 Um, okay. Now, next item is the Board of Education's financial report of 229. The uh, remorse. <laughs> the remorse. <laughs> the remorse. <laughs> 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 Did you bite your tongue like I did last time? Oh, God. <laughs> 
All right, so the report in front of you, uh, very positive. The revenue projections continue ahead of prior year, 89.8% total compared to 87.3. On the expense side of the house, uh, also positive variances, 65.5% expended versus 68.9. The big over expenditure remains the uh, emergency management with the generator situation at the intermediate school. And I'm in contact with, with John regularly on it. And he seems that the, thinks the issue has been resolved. They're running it more frequently with the kerosene in the tank. And it seems to eliminate the gumming up issue and uh, is running better. So aside from that, the report's unremarkable. I've ended any questions you have. I'd be happy to answer them, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. All right, next item is approval of tax refunds. So moved. Second. Well, it was moved by Councillor Diamond and seconded Second. by Councillor Abelson. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, all in favor, or discussion? Anthony, yes. on the tax refunds, is there, is there, um, is there a possibility ever to reduce those? Or is that, or is that what causes that? Let's, let's put it that way. Uh, many things, <coughs> let's look at specific ones. Many times uh, people overpay. People that pay online don't wait. They hit the button and it doesn't happen like on a MasterCard instantaneously. So they hit it again. Oh, okay. Then they hit it again. <laughs> and some people pay three and four times and you're refunding the payments. Okay. Uh, a lot of times when people refinance their houses, it's the first guy will pay, the second guy will pay, there's always over payments because of that. Uh, excessive payments, uh, certificates of correction, you may have paid for a car, but you sold it. You bring your paperwork into the assessor and he reduces your bill, therefore you overpaid the taxes, okay. and this refunds your money for that. All right. I was just wondering if there's any, you know, something that can be done to reduce it and no. reduce the amount of work that, because it's like double work, it seems. Yeah, but. It's, it's amazing the amount of people that overpay their taxes. Uh, yeah, I don't have an answer for it. Okay, no, it's just I'll try next month. Are you excited? <laughs> All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? All right, and the next item is item I, is um, the STW renovation, moving the STW renovations projects to the permanent project building committee. Do I hear a motion? So moved. A second? I'll second. second. Okay, so motion was made by Councilor Felicia, second by Councilor Miller. Um, to, to move all of the items um, submitted by the Director of Park and Rec to the Permanent Project Building Committee. I just ask that because they haven't been at Permanent Project that now moving forward since this has, that the two reps be notified and get an agenda so, so that they're at the meetings. And the, it's the Director and or her designee and John Onofrio from the um, Park and Rec Commission. Those are the two reps. Got it. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? It, motion carries. Next item is citizen statement and petition. Any citizen statements? Okay. Next item is the town manager um, evaluation. It's continuing on with his evaluation and it's a matter of compensation. So I do I hear a motion? A motion for going into executive session in regards to the town manager compensation continuation conversation. So your, your motion should include who you want in executive in session. In my motion, please. we will include all town council members, town manager, town attorney, Right. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, we are going into executive session at 8.57. <coughs> if anyone needs to take a little break while we're on clear. That shouldn't take long, right? Me? Yeah. yeah. For Facebook? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay. Okay. So we are back on the air. Um, so the next item is item 15B. And I would like, do I hear a motion to increase the town manager's salary to 140,000 effective January 1st, 2024? and to increase it to 145,000 on July 1st, 2024. Motion is stipulated. Second. Motion has been made by Deputy Mayor McMillan, seconded by Councillor Zampiano. Discussion? All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. <clears throat> motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Happy St. Anthony's Day. St. Anthony's Day. Oh my God, St. Anthony's Day.